What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the time picker for KVMD and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at the time picker for KVMD. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee, just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at the time picker. So we can click cancel here. We can click this. We can pick a different hour. We can click on this thing. We can pick a minute. We can go AM, PM, when we click the button, it returns whatever we picked. And that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So head back over to our code here. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with over 50 other Kiwi videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got two files here, time.py and time.kv. Our basic Kiwi starter code that we always use. We've got our builder here set to time.kv. I've got the theme set the light, usually use dark, but light looks better for this thing. So I'll just add light. And the first thing we want to do before we even get into this is let's just import this uh, time picker that we need. So let's go from kivy md dot uix dot picker. We want to import md time picker. Okay, that's all there is to that. So let's head back over to our Kivi file here. I'm just using a basic float layout. So all we want here is a button and a label so we can click on the button to open the time picker. We did the same exact thing in the last video for the date picker, very similar, uh, a couple of little differences, but very, very similar. So let's go MD raised button. And this is gonna be, and let's set the text equal here to open time picker, very original. And let's give this a position underscore hint of and let's go center underscore x set that equal to 0.5 and let's and let's go center underscore y also set that equal to 0.5 put it right in the middle of the screen and then here on underscore release we want to do app dot show underscore time underscore picker and we'll create this function in just a second so that's all we need for the button now let's create a little label let's go md label and let's give this an ID of time underscore label. And let's give us a text of some stuff, right? And then also let's do a position hint for this one as well. I'll just copy this. And instead of 0.5, let's go 0.95 and 0.4, put it down a little bit. So, okay, that looks good. So now let's create this show time picker function. So let's head back over to our Python file. And let's come down here and define show picker. We also want to pass in self as always. And here we need to set a time underscore dialog. And let's set that equal to MD time picker. And that's what we imported right here. So that's that guy. And now let's just open this. So let's go time underscore dialog dot open and just see how this looks. So let's head over to our terminal here. I'm in my C slash KVMD directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. And let's run python time.py. And when we do, we get this thing, we can open time picker, and here we've got our time picker. So we can toggle between AM and PM. We can pick a hour, we click on this thing to change it to pick the minutes. And we can also click this thing to get this keyboard thing where you can, you know, type in whatever you want, like that, something like that, whatever. Okay, so, that's cool, but now how do we return whatever we selected as the time? So let's head back over to our code and let's come down here and let's go time underscore dialogue dot bind. And we want a couple of things. So first let's go on on underscore cancel. And that's going to be self dot on underscore cancel. And we also want time. And let's set that equal to self dot get underscore time. Okay, so we need to create these two functions. So let's come back here and do that. And let's say get time and cancel. So let's define on underscore cancel. We want to pass in self. We also need to pass in an instance and we also need to pass in time. Now I know we're just canceling a thing here. We're not using the time and we're not using an instance, but this guy will, this MD picker will pass those two things into this function whether we want to or not. So we have to account for them like this. 
So here, remember, we've got this label called time label. So we can just here go self dot root dot IDS dot time label dot text and say you clicked cancel and that will work. And that's all we need to do there. So now let's play with this get time thing. So let's define get underscore time. And we also want to pass that self that instance and the time. Right. And we're calling this get time because down here we call this get time, right? So, okay, here the same thing. We can print out the time. So I'm just gonna copy this stuff and paste it in. And we need to convert it to a string. And then we can just pass in time. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, run this guy again. Let's give this a test. We open it up, we click cancel. It says click you click you click cancel. We do this, we change it to one. 10. We click OK. Now it says 110 there. And just that easy. Now, one thing to note, this is military time. So it's a 24 hour clock. So for instance, if we picked PM, and then we went like 415, that would be 1615 in military time because you add 12 to everything, right? Except for the first 12. So if we clicked OK here, it says 1615. So you can take that into account. You could probably mess around with it if you really wanted to hack around with this a bit. I'm not gonna mess with that in this video. I'll let you figure that out if you're interested. But the AM will always be one through 12. So like 3 AM, that's just gonna return as three, right? So uh, pretty cool. So just like with the date picker, we can set a time that shows by default. You see when we click this, it shows 12 o'clock. We can change that. So let's head back over to our code. And to do that, we need to import a Python library called date time. So let's go from date time. We want to import date time. I've done lots of videos on date time stuff in the past. And here, let's define previous or let's call this uh, default time. So I'm going to call this default underscore time set that equal to date time dot strp time. And now we can pass in whatever time we want. So let's say 420 o'clock. That's going to be in the format four colon 20 colon 00. And then with date time stuff, you always sort of have to define what it is. So this is percent hours, and then a colon percent minutes and then colon percent seconds, right? And then at the end of this, we have to slap a dot time function. So now we can pass this time as the default time. So to do that, we just come down here and let's go time underscore dialogue equals and let me comment this uh, set default time. Here we just go set. Actually, this is dot set underscore time and we just pass in that default time right right there so now this should open up as 420 when we open it save this let's run this guy one more time click on this boom it says 420 by default okay, we click on this same deal so and we know it's a.m because it's military time right anything between anything before 12 o'clock is a.m anything after 12 o'clock is PM and you add 12 to it, right? That's how military time works or whatever that's called. And uh, pretty simple. So that's the time picker. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, very easy to use, very useful and kind of cool. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships. It pays $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.